James has a dog. Named Buckley. His name is Buckley. I have a dog. All right. So my talk is uh, attributed as a teens for fun and profit. My name is James Thickpen. Um, I didn't actually know that there was going to be a rover advertisement before my talk, but um, so this is just a happy coincidence. But I'm a dog person, a software guy, um, and an adventurer. That's what I decided to put there because I couldn't think of anything else. At the moment. Um, so I, so Scott has introduced me, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about who I am before I launch into this. Um, and I think a good way to explain who a person is is to explain what they're passionate about. Um, and so these are things that I'm passionate about. I'm really passionate about software engineering, the craft of you know, creating software, creating things for people to make them happy. Um, I'm also really passionate about organizational development. I really like um, helping teams grow, helping teams, um, creating environments in which teams can grow. Uh, I think that's sort of the only way that teams can be made. You can't make a team. You can only create an environment in which one can be made. Um, I'm really passionate about product development. It's, it's great to sit around and talk about you know, all the great PDD things you're doing, and your amazing ORM layer, and all the super fun stuff. But if you're making a product that's shitty that nobody wants to use, what's the point? Um, I love when I can create something for someone that makes them happy. Um, and if you've never had the opportunity to create something in software for someone that makes them just very, very happy, I highly recommend it. Um, I'm really passionate about company culture. Uh, I believe that if, if you have a company, if you have an organization, a team, a group, whatever, that has a shared culture, that has a set of values that are sort of, that you don't have to constantly express the things that you want out of them. Um, so if you, have a, if you have a culture that is really passionate about the quality of the code that you create, you don't have to constantly sit there and harp about we need high quality code. If you have a culture that's really in has an, you know an intrinsic value of you know we want our product to look good, then you don't just sit there and harp about the product not looking good because it will just happen. And the the richer your culture is, the more that you can have these things inside your team's culture, the more successful you will be. Um, I'm really passionate about teamwork. Uh, a team is more than just a group of people. Um, a team that's working together really well will be far more than the sum of its parts. Um, I'm really passionate about Agile and Lean philosophies, the values that sort of ground them. Um, I, I, I really do believe in them. They're not a silver bullet. They're not going to you know, solve all your problems, but they're, they're a pretty good way to go about doing things. Um, and I'm really passionate about professional development. Uh, the last year and a half or so, I was working primarily as a manager, and I really enjoyed being able to help people grow uh, in the organization. Uh, so that, that's who I am. Um, but we're here to talk about uh, distributed teams and agile and distributed teams. Um, and so the way that we're going to go about, the way that I want to go about doing that is talking about what problem you're trying to solve with a distributed team. Uh, what are some of the benefits of having a distributed team? Uh, what are some of the drawbacks? And then sort of I want to change gears a little bit, get away from the abstract, and get into you know, what are some of the things that can help make it work, and what are some of the things that you really don't want to do. Um, I want to take a little detour first and just kind of define a little bit of, I want to manage expectations and manage the scope here. Because um, when you say a distributed team or a remote team, there's several different things that you can be talking about. Um, so I want to talk about the difference between a remote team a remote engineer and a distributed team, because um, I'm only talking about one of those tonight. Um, remote teams, you can think of a group of co-located people somewhere else. Um, so you might think outsourcing, like there's this team somewhere in some other place, and that's where they live. But they're all together in the same building. Um, that's not our topic tonight. I don't really have any experience with that, so I don't have any reason to talk about that. Um, Another thing is remote engineers. This is something that I've worked with before. Uh, this is when you have a primarily local team, and then you have one or two remote engineers, usually through some kind of circumstance in which they, that um, those individuals sort of end up somewhere else. Um, so you have primarily local and co-located people and a minority of remote workers. Um, I haven't seen this done very well. Um, so this is also sort of not what we're talking about tonight. 
Um, the focus of our talk tonight is on distributed teams. Teams that don't have either much of a, like they don't have a central hub, a central office at all, or more commonly there is a central office but the majority of those people are elsewhere. Um, that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, and so when I just say distributed team, that's what I mean. You might have you know, one person in Montana, and one person in California, and one person in New York, and one person in Florida. Um, they're just all over the place. And so the, the, the core of the team, the soul of the team, is purely virtual. And so after that brief detour, um, I want to talk about the problem. Uh, before I go any further, any, any questions? Can everybody hear me OK? Um, all that fun, happy stuff. So I want to talk about the problem. 